A Brayton cycle operates with a single reheater and compressor inlet conditions of 1 bar and 300 K. The pressure ratio across each turbine stage is 5. Each turbine inlet is at 1600 K. The isentropic efficiency of the compressor is 90%. The isentropic efficiency of each turbine is 90%. Calculate the back work ratio and the thermal efficiency of this cycle. Use an air standard analysis. So we have a Brayton cycle here with a single reheater and there's no mention of any uh, intercoolers and there's no mention of any regeneration. So we need to know what a Brayton cycle with a single reheater looks like. And so we start off our solution with our given information and that schematic diagram is very important. So a Brayton cycle with a single reheater has a single stage compressor taking us up to the combustion chamber. And then because there's one reheater, there must be two turbine stages. So the products of combustion go through the first turbine to some intermediate pressure. The reheater operates at that pressure, adding additional heat. And then they go through the second turbine and exit to atmosphere. So essential that we know what components make up a Brayton cycle with a single reheater. Now we want to take a look at the properties we've been given in the problem statement and get them at the right place on our diagram. So we're told that the compressor inlet conditions are 1 bar and 300 K. So we know down here state point 1 has a temperature of 300 K and a pressure of 1 bar. The pressure ratio across each turbine stage is 5. So in terms of the state point numbers that we have, that tells us that P3 over P4 is 5. So that's the ratio of this pressure to this pressure. And P5 over P6 is 5. So the ratio of this pressure to this pressure. So the pressure ratio across each turbine stage is 5. Notice that that tells us that the pressure ratio across the compressor is 25. And we're going to be making use of that in the analysis. Because the Brayton cycle, inlet, and exit are always at the same pressure. So we know we have one bar at 0.6. So if there's a ratio of 5 across each turbine stage, there must be a ratio of 25 across the compressor. Other things we're told is that the temperature at the inlet to each turbine is 1600 K. So that's T3 and T5. The inlet to the first turbine and the inlet to the second turbine are both 1600 K. The compressor isentropic efficiency is 90% and each turbine stage also has an isentropic efficiency of 90%. So that's all our given information put onto the diagram. What we're asked to find is the thermal efficiency of the cycle and the back work ratio. So the assumptions that we'll be making will assume this Brayton cycle is operating at steady state. We have adiabatic compressor and turbines, so no heat transfer with the surroundings for the compressor or the turbine stages. We're neglecting kinetic and potential energy everywhere. We have constant pressure in the reheater and the combustion chamber. So these are heat exchangers, so we have constant pressure in our heat exchangers. And finally, we're told to use an air standard analysis. And remember what that means is that air is the working fluid throughout, and we'll be treating it as an ideal gas. So our analysis, first of all, we recognize the definition of the thermal efficiency is the net work divided by Q added. So this is true for any power cycle. And so what we want to do is recognize what components contribute to these two things for this particular cycle. So here we have two turbine stages and a compressor are transferring work with the surroundings. So we put all of those in the numerator. And the added heat is coming from the combustion chamber and from the reheater. So notice that all of these things are expressed on a per unit mass basis. They're all lowercase letters. And also notice that the mass flow rate through all of the components is the same. So we don't have to worry about different mass flow rates in the components. So it's convenient to do everything here on a per unit mass basis. The back work ratio, which we'll also be looking for, is the magnitude of the compressor work divided by the turbine work. 
and we have to recognize there's two turbine stages, so we would include both of those there. So you'll note that in order to evaluate the thermal efficiency and the back work ratio, we need to get the work and the heat transfer in all of the components in the Brayton cycle. So that's what we'll turn our attention to now. So the first law for an open system is going to be used to do this. So our general first law is shown here. Steady state, so that term is gone. Depending on what component we're looking at, either the heat transfer or the work transfer will be zero. Each of these components only has a single inlet or a single exit, so we don't need to worry about the summation signs. And we'll be assuming that kinetic and potential energy are zero everywhere in this cycle. So we can begin our analysis by looking at the compressor, which just happens to be the first component. So when we apply the assumptions we listed and apply the first law to the compressor and divide through by the mass flow rate, we get that the compressor work is H1 minus H2. So the enthalpy change across the compressor gives the work per unit mass by the compressor. Now the inlet condition, H1, is no problem because we know the temperature there. And remember this is an ideal gas, so as long as we know the temperature, we can get the enthalpy. So we'll start off with that. Now one thing we need to recognize here is that these are not isentropic compressors. So we're going to have to take the compressor efficiency into account in this analysis. So we remember our definition of the isentropic efficiency of a compressor. It's the isentropic work divided by the real work. So the approach we'll be taking here is actually calculating the isentropic work, dividing it by the compressor efficiency to get the real work for the compressor. So we start off by looking for our enthalpy at the inlet to the compressor. And remember, the real compressor and the isentropic compressor have the same inlet conditions. So because we know T1, 300K, that's everything we need to know to get H1. So the enthalpy at the inlet to the compressor is 300.19 kilojoules per kilogram. And that's coming from table A22, our ideal gas table for air. Now while we're in that table, we're also going to look up the value of the relative pressure at point 1. And remember this is only a function of temperature as well, so it's tabulated in table A22 along with this enthalpy. So that value is 1.3860. Now the reason that we've looked up that PR1 is to enable us to calculate the exit conditions at the exit of the isentropic compressor. Because remember this PR1 is applicable to an isentropic process. And the way it's used is that the ratio of the pressures across the compressor has to be equal to the ratio of relative pressures for an isentropic process. So for the isentropic compressor, we can use this. And we know the ratio of these pressures, that's 25. And we've been able to look up PR1, so this will allow us to calculate PR2. So that'll give us that property at the exit of the isentropic compressor that we need. So we go on to calculate PR2 just by rearranging this equation. So we take our value of PR1, and multiply it by 25. So remember the pressure ratio across the compressor is 25. Because the pressure ratio across each of the two turbine stages is 5. So this gives us our value of PR2 of 34.650. Now we can go to table A22 with a value of PR2 and use it in reverse and look up our value of H2S. And notice this is H2S because this relationship is talking about the isentropic compressor. So now we have an H2S, we can go ahead and calculate our compressor work. So the compressor work is going to be the isentropic work divided by the compressor isentropic efficiency. So that's just this equation rearranged for the compressor work. We put our enthalpy difference in the numerator to get the isentropic work. So H1 minus the H2S value that we just looked up, and then divide by the isentropic efficiency of the compressor. So this gives us a compressor work of minus 501.20 kilojoules per kilogram. 
And notice it's negative because this is a compressor, work input to the system. Now the other thing that we're going to do before we leave the compressor is use our value of H1 and the compressor work to get the actual enthalpy at the exit of the compressor. Remember this H2S is not the real enthalpy at the exit. We need to get the real enthalpy by applying the first law. So we go back to our first law for the real compressor. H2 is going to be equal to H1 minus the work of the compressor. And we have H1 and we just calculated the compressor work. So we get H2 of 801.39 kilojoules per kilogram. So we need this because we're going to go on to analyze other components and that's the real enthalpy at the inlet to the combustion chamber which is the next component. The mistake we sometimes make is using this as our inlet to the combustion chamber but this is not a real value of H2 it's at this hypothetical exit of the isentropic compressor. So we've got our H2 value, now we're ready to go on to the combustion chamber. So we do that, and the first law for the combustion chamber tells us that the heat added per unit mass is H3 minus H2, and the H2 we've just found. So 0.3, we know the temperature, it's 1600 K, because we were told the inlet to both turbines is at 1600 K. So we can go to table A22 at 1600 K and look up our value of the enthalpy there. So 1757.57. And while we're there, we'll also look up the value of the relative pressure because we'll be able to use that when we analyze the turbine. So finishing off our QCC calculation, we have both enthalpies that we need. And so the heat added in the combustion chamber is 956.18 kilojoules per kilogram. So we keep going through the components in this cycle and the next one is the first turbine stage. So when we apply the first law to the first turbine we get the work of the turbine is H3 minus H4 and the H3 we looked up here. Now just like the compressor these turbines are not isentropic. So we're going to have to use this relative pressure to get the isentropic work first and then use the efficiency to get the real work. So our relative pressure applied over the first turbine stage, so this is from 3 to 4, the actual pressure ratio is equal to the ratio of relative pressures. And so we know everything in here except PR4. So our PR3 that we looked up here, 791.2, needs to be divided by 5. And that's because the pressure ratio across that turbine is 5. So P4 over P3 is 1 over 5, or 1 fifth. So PR4 is 158.24. So this will allow us to get H4S. So back to table A22 with that value of PR, and we find that H4S is 1143.81. So now we can get our work for turbine 1. So this enthalpy difference in parentheses is the isentropic work, and then we're multiplying it by the turbine efficiency, 0.9, to get the real work. And that works out to 552, 0.38 kilojoules per kilogram. So that's the actual work for our first turbine. Now we also need to get H4 from this. So H4 is H3 minus the work of turbine 1. And we have our H3 and our turbine work. So this gives the enthalpy at the exit of the first turbine as 1205.19 kilojoules per kilogram. The next component is the reheater. So we go on to the reheater and the heat transfer into the reheater is H5 minus H4 and we have H4 here. H5 is equal to H3. Why is that? Well because T5 is equal to T3 and for an ideal gas enthalpy is only a function of temperature. So we already have our value for H5. 
So Q in the reheater is 1757.57 minus 1205.19. So the amount of heat added in the reheater is 552.37 kilojoules per kilogram. Now, the next component is turbine two, but realize that the pressure ratio across those two turbines is the same, five in both cases. And the inlet temperature into both turbines is the same, 1600 Kelvin, and the isentropic efficiency of both turbines is the same. So we can save ourselves a bit of time here because all of those things mean that the work per unit mass of the second turbine has to be the same as the first turbine. So we can just take the 552.38 and use that for the second turbine as well. So now we're ready to calculate the thermal efficiency of this cycle. So we recall that that includes both turbines and the compressor in the numerator and the combustion chamber and the reheater in the denominator. So we put all of those numbers in there. We're multiplying this work by two because the work transfer for each turbine is the same. So we're just multiplying it by two. And then this is our compressor work and then the combustion chamber and the reheater. And all of this works out to a efficiency of 0.40009 or 40%. Lastly, we want to get the back work ratio. So we remember what the back work ratio is and we go get these work transfer terms. Again, two times 552.38 in the denominator because the turbines are the same. And this gives a back work ratio of 45.367%. So finally, we conclude the thermal efficiency of this Brayton cycle is 40.0% and the back work ratio is 45.4%.